please join us in singing our opening hymn, which is found on page 715, Jesus Lead the Way, page 715. Jesus lead the way through our life's long day when at times the way is cheerless help us follow calm and fearless guide us by we gather to worship and praise our God, and we always begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. We again rejoice in God's presence, and we give thanks for all the blessings that we enjoy and so often take for granted. For the times that we have ne neglected God and forgotten about him in our life, we ask his pardon. Lord Jesus, you are the way we follow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the truth we seek. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the life without end. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you are 
pray. <clears throat> o God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, you shall anoint Elisha son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He was following the 12th. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah and said, please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him and, taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. O oh Lord, it is You who are my portion and cup. You who yourself secure my lot. Lo, You are my inheritance. my heart. I keep the Lord before me always. With him at my right hand, I shall not be moved. You My soul is glad, even my flesh shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to hell, nor let your Holy One see corruption. You path of life. 
the fullness of joy in your presence at your right hand bliss forever you A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters. But do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, be aware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the words of everlasting life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days for Jesus' being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, another, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury the dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind 
is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've been asked to read a letter this Sunday from five of the bishops of the Northwest uh, re referring to the recent uh, Roe v. Wade decision by the Supreme Court. The title of the letter is, is A Call to Respect Life and Serve Families in Need. Quote, defense of unborn life is closely linked to the defense of each and every other human right, it involves the conviction that a human being is always sacred and invaluable in any situation at every stage of development. End quote, Pope Francis Evangeli Gaudium. Respecting the dignity of every human life from conception to natural death is a core tenet of our Catholic faith. This conviction compels us to seek justice and advocate for the vulnerable, the voiceless, and the afflicted. Upholding the dignity of every human person drives us to care for the poor, to welcome immigrants, to seek racial and social justice, and to oppose abortion. We commend the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade and give individual states the opportunity to enact laws that respect life. We welcome this opportunity to reduce the number of abortions in the United States and to build a culture of life. Due to the laws passed prior to Roe, abortion remains legal in the state of Washington. Regardless of legal status of abortion, the church's call to respect life remains unchanged. We must continue to not only speak out against abortion, but also to care for mothers who face unplanned or challenging pregnancies. As mothers and families choose life under difficult circumstances, we are called to accompany them on their journey and to do all we can to support them and their children. Advocating for life does not end with the birth of a child. Respecting the dignity of every human person means ensuring that families' basic needs are met and that they are given the opportunity to thrive. At this time, we invite all Catholic parishes, institutions, organizations, and individuals to redouble efforts to accompany women and couples confronted with unexpected or difficult pregnancies. Many Catholic programs throughout the state provide assistance accompaniment and mentorship to vulnerable families as they nurture their children from pregnancy through early childhood. Now is the time for the faithful to offer a viable alternative to abortion by increasing efforts to serve families in need. Contact the Washington State Catholic Conference to learn more. Much work remains to build a culture of life in our state. Through the Washington State Catholic Conference, we will continue to advocate for public policies that support life and help struggling families to thrive. Please join us in advocating for the common good. Finally, we invite you to pray with us that all will one day recognize that every human life is sacred and deserving of reverence, protection, and assistance 
in times of need. In the heart of Christ, Most Reverend Paul Intian, Archbishop of Seattle, Most Reverend Joseph Tyson, Bishop of Yakima, Most Reverend Thomas Daly, Bishop of Spokane, Most Reverend Isubio Elizondo, Auxiliary Bishop of Seattle, and Most Reverend Frank Schuster, Auxiliary Bishop of Seattle. Well, you know, there's been an awful lot of backlash this last week about that decision made by the Supreme Court. But we know also that here in Washington, in fact, the western states, California, Oregon, and Washington, things haven't changed because the people themselves, years ago, voted to make abortion legal in these states. The only thing I'm afraid of is that we become a haven and kind of a, a, an abortion factory out here in the West, because other states like Idaho, for example, uh, will make it illegal, or have made it illegal. But the one problem we have, there's so much division in our country, we know that, politically, geographically, sexual orientation-wise, all these different ways. We don't need to add to that division. And we find people that don't agree with us. There's nothing, there's nothing to be gained about fighting or arguing. We lead much more by example than we ever did by word. And that's what we're called to do, to redo our energies to really help women who are pregnant, who are expecting children, especially that they weren't prepared to receive that birth of a child to support men and women who have unexpected pregnancies in their own marriage. We have a great program in our state, sponsored by the Catholic Diocese of Spokane and Yakima and the Archdiocese of Seattle. Sally Cockrell is our parish coordinator for that program. And it's really an opportunity for us to reach out and redouble our efforts to help those who are pregnant, who are expecting children, to help also to support those children for the first five years of their life. Because that's when the years are most demanding on the financial resources and energy of so many parents. So if you need any help in us, just contact Sally, she's back there. She loves to be of support and help. She's been so active and marvelous in our parish community in so many ways, but she's taken on herself this responsibility of coordinating our work for PREPARES, which is a program to help expected mothers and also children through their first five years of life. I just would hate to see, even in our own community, we were warned the other day, um, by the way, that um, we could expect violence here in our cathedral because we're the Cathedral Church of the Diocese at the response of the Supreme Court. But I didn't really personally expect any problems because nothing really has changed statewide. And we still have abortion that is legal. But we need to redouble our efforts, as we said, to really work for the dignity and the intensity of importance of every single individual. We might not agree with people who enter into, for example, um, same-sex marriages, or who are different sexually with orientations different than ours, but they're still children of God. All of us are. God has made all of us. Sometimes we don't use our free will and our intellect properly, but that doesn't mean God doesn't continue to love them and love us, too. We have to be kind. We can be firm, but we need to be kind to people and not increase the divisiveness that exists in our own country and in our own communities. And we pray that God give us the strength and the help that we need to be instruments of his peace regarding this latest documentation of nullifying 
the Roe Wade decision made almost 50 years ago. We pray that there will be a lessening, indeed, of the number of abortions, of killing of little children. We also pray in the pro-life stance for the end of wars, because wars kill people too. And so do drive-by shootings. And so do those indiscriminate shootings in schools that we've been horrified witnesses of in the last few months, last few years. The right to life and our reverence and respect for life extends far beyond being anti-abortion. It extends to the quality and the dignity of every human being, from conception to natural death. And we pray that God give us the courage and the strength to be firm, yes, in our convictions, but also to be kind and gentle in our responses to those who don't agree with us. And now I invite you to stand as we profess our faith together, turning inside the front cover of our books and praying together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God. All this invisible. I believe in... before all ages. God, light from light, true God from true God. One name, one substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our salvation, he came down from heaven. Seeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, He is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I believe for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, strengthened by your accompaniment of us each day as we journey through life we come with confidence to place our petitions before you. That all people find in the church the truth that sets them free. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the entire world to come to know and love Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that as we celebrate Independence Day this year, we remember our dependence on God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this community of faith of St. Paul's welcome strangers and comfort the sorrowing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the needs and desires of the 56th anniversary class from Marquette and St. Joseph's. And for all those who have died in those classes, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for all victims of wars, especially in the Ukraine, and for the millions who are exiled from their own homes, and for all the victims of senseless shootings, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, help us always to be mindful that you walk with us and strengthen us to live according to the teachings of your church and the faith you have given us as a great gift. We ask this always through Christ our Lord. Please join us in singing our operatory hymn, page 773, The Summons, page 773.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy to these of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly ask you, by the same Spirit, make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Paul and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, Lord, gather to yourself all of the, your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
now as brothers and sisters in the Lord, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Good, you didn't forget, you didn't forget today. Peace with you. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Enter under my roof. Our communion hymn is found on page 783, Here I Am, Lord, page 783.
crime All who dwell in dark and sin My hand will save I who made the stars of night I will make their darkness bright Who will bear my light to them Whom shall I save? bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied I will give my life to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is it I Lord I have Oh, 
let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the great music today. We really appreciate it. As you know, later on this summer, we're losing our marvelous director of music, Jerry Kaminsky. He's going back to his home territory back in the Midwest. And um, next Sunday, uh, after this Mass, we're going to have reception. We have special hors d'oeuvres and heavy hors d'oeuvres and sandwiches and all that good stuff to feed everybody over there. So come on and plan to join us next Sunday after this Mass over in the assembly place and outside that as well. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is found on page 787, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve, page 787. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. We go in Jesus' name to bring glad tidings to the poor, God's favor to proclaim. We go to comfort those who mourn and set the burden free. Where hope is dim to share.